Hi and welcome to the eighth episode of the Neuroendocrine Cancer Nutrition Series. So this episode is on chemotherapy and supplementation. So we know a lot of patients take supplements and we know that a lot of patients also take supplements during chemotherapy. So one study that I took part in a couple of years ago um, showed that over half of neuroendocrine cancer patients took at least one form of vitamins, minerals, botanical, herbal extracts, homeopathic or probiotic supplements during chemotherapy. When we ask patients why they take something, it's usually because someone that's not qualified in this area has told them to take it or that one of their friends recommended it um, and perhaps someone's just been taking something for a few years and didn't think to stop it during chemotherapy or, or to ask um, you know, whether it's safe. So we know that some forms of chemo can be really harsh and people want to kind of protect themselves during chemo um, against those harsh effects. The problem is it's those harsh effects that makes chemo successful. We need those cancer cells to be killed, which is the whole aim of going through chemo. Our study and other studies showed that very few patients actually reported these kind of complementary therapies um, to their oncologist. Drug nutrient and drug herb interactions are really common, so you should discuss any complementary pills or potions that you take with your team before you start chemotherapy. Much of the threat of supplement taking during chemotherapy actually involves high dose antioxidants, so this includes vitamin A, C, E and the mineral selenium. However, high doses of zinc, copper and CoQ10 may also have a weak effect, it's not very clear. So, quick lesson in antioxidants and free radicals. Free radicals, although you may think they're the bad ones, uh, they're not really the bad ones and antioxidants aren't really the good ones. They both have to work together. So antioxidants themselves become reactive after donating an electron to a free radical. But in cases where a variety of antioxidants are present, like the way that we eat our food and antioxidants present themselves in food, um, they act as a cascading buffer for each other, so they in turn give up electrons to new reactive molecules. So say you take a high dose of vitamin C, I know that vitamin C infusions are very popular now and people are told to have these infusions because um, it cures cancer or helps with, with cancer treatment. So then you have an environment where there are no other antioxidants in high enough doses to provide that protective cascade effect which other nutrients when you eat food will do. So you could end up with too much vitamin C in your system in a reactive form which then itself causes antioxidant stress. So a person taking single very high dose antioxidant supplements may actually end up doing themselves more harm than good. In addition, two studies um, in other cancers involving chemotherapy found that high dose antioxidants may have reduced the effect of the chemotherapy working. It's okay to have several different an antioxidants up to 100% NRV or RDA de depending where you live. Um, so they can all bounce off each other and prevent any damage in the body. Obviously food is safe, um, high antioxidant containing foods are fine, um, but all drugs are different and you must follow pharmacist advice. So in terms of other supplements, it's important to mention the enzyme cytochrome P450, which regulates the oral bioavailability of drugs and nutrients. Grapefruit juice and St John's wort are the most common supplements that interfere with these enzymes. However, green tea does interact with many drugs and may affect chemo metabolism. Although there's lots of evidence to say that it doesn't affect these enzymes. So discuss with your pharmacist when it comes to drinking green tea and supplements because I know it has been uh, an issue with our patients in the past. The same is true for ginkgo biloba supplements as well. When it comes to curcumin or turmeric supplements, they're an unlikely to interact with anything um, and supplements have shown promising effects during chemotherapy for bowel cancer, um, reducing things like um, nerve damage and tingling in the fingers. 
Um, unfortunately, I'm still waiting for someone to do a trial in neuroendocrine cancer. Hopefully that will be on the cards somewhere. Um, then there's things like aloe vera, so it's often reported um, in being useful as a calming ingredient for the GI tract um, and against the side effects of chemotherapy. But actually the evidence in clinical trials isn't great and it can actually cause digestive problems if eaten. Um, in the long term it can be seriously toxic um, and can cause liver damage uh, when it's eaten. However, it's absolutely fine to use on the skin. Uh, Genistein is a phytoestrogen supplement from soya. Uh, however, it increases the amount of paclitaxel chemotherapy um, in your system. So if you are taking that type of chemotherapy, um, make sure that you steer clear of this supplement. Um, so when I look back at the results of my study a couple of years ago, um, patients said they wanted more information about complementary therapies and nutrition during chemotherapy. It's actually really difficult to find. Um, information online is very generic um, and actually clear informa information needs to come from your um, team before you start the chemotherapy. I think ideally it needs to be written down. So naturally, some patients during chemotherapy do want to take probiotics, and this is because of the GI side effects of chemotherapy and the um, effect on the immune system. Within our study, actually, um, probiotic use wasn't high. There were a few patients taking them. However, probiotics generally aren't recommended um, during chemotherapy in the UK. Uh, this is because of the risk of neutropenia. And neutropenia is where the white blood cells called neutrophils become too low and, and too low to fight off an infection. So taking a yeast probiotic or a bacteria probiotic theoretically when neutrophils are so low could cause an infection. Very rare incidents of illness have happened when um, someone has taken a yeast probiotic, so Saccharomyces boulardii yeast probiotics, um, and this hasn't happened in the oncology population, so we don't know whether oncology patients suffering with neutropenia um, are at the same risk, but we do know within the haematology patient group that people that have had um, stem cell transplants and have very low immunity, have actually been infected with lactobacilli bacteria probiotics. On the other hand, several studies do suggest that probiotics can be useful um, during chemotherapy um, and other cancer treatments because of the effect on the immune system and the gut bacteria. Um, However, overall, we still have to be cautious. And so I say, if you're really keen on taking a probiotic for those reasons, please discuss it with your oncologist before you start chemotherapy, um, because they may feel that your risk of neutropenia is very high. So in summary, make sure that you discuss what you take and what you intend to take during chemotherapy. Make sure this is written down and documented in your medical notes. You can ask the chemotherapy pharmacist to look up any uh, drug herb or drug nutrient interactions um, and get them to write this down for you. Um, so when you get home, you don't forget which things you can and can't take. Discuss probiotics with your oncologist. They may or may not recommend that you take probiotics because of your risk of neutropenia and don't take high dose antioxidants. So that's it for this week. Um, tune in next week for episode nine.